Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So, we'll continue our discussion related to classification of signals. In the previous few videos, we discussed some questions related to periodic and non-periodic signals. So, in the next uh, series of videos, we'll be discussing some questions on energy and power signals. Okay. This is the first question. So, it has been asked to determine the power and RMS value that is root mean square value of the signal which is given by xt is equal to a sin omega 0 t plus theta is the amplitude omega subscript o or 0 whatever you want to say that is the angular frequency theta is the initial phase. So if you remember if you recall some of the questions uh, some of the concepts related to energy and power signals the energy of a signal okay that is given by phi to phi t square dt okay this and the power of a signal is given by limit capital T tends to infinity 1 by 2t minus t to t x t square dt. So, if you substitute this t with infinity minus phi to phi then it's basically it is 1 by 2 t into the energy value this. So, here uh, we will do the same thing. So, here x t square dt we have to determine this power power of the signal so here it will be the power of the above signal that is equal to limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2t minus t to t x t square which is a sine omega subscript o t plus theta square ok this this one that is dt so here it will be limit t tends to infinity 1 by 2 t minus t to t a square sin square omega 0 t plus theta t t ok which is equal to limit t tends to infinity a square it will come outside a square by 2t minus t to t sin square omega 0 t plus theta dt. Now here we will be using a trigonometric identity which is 1 minus cos 2x by 2 is equal to sin square x this ok this identity will be using so here sin square omega 0 t plus theta if we take this omega 0 t plus theta as x this will become 1 minus cos 2 omega 0 t plus theta by 2 so we'll be making that substitution here so that will become to infinity a square by 2t minus t to t 1 minus cos 2 omega 0 t plus theta by 2 dt ok this so again 
it will become limit t tends to infinity a square by 2t here it will become minus t to t 1 by 2 dt and minus minus t to t 1 by 2 if you can also take the 2 entirely outside that will be great okay if we take the 2 entirely outside that will be great so here what we'll do we'll take the 1 by 2 outside the bracket it will cut one step okay this is dt this is here 1 by 2 Okay, I am taking this 1 by 2 entirely outside, 1 by 2, this is dt and this is only cos 2 omega 0 t plus theta dt, this, okay. Okay, this. Now, another important thing here. So, this is integration of a cos function. If you notice here, this is integration of a cos function over one complete cycle from minus t to t. So, if you take a look at sine and cosine functions okay let's say we first take a sine function okay 0 t 2 t and if we extend it to this side say minus t here and we also take a cos function let's say this is sine, this is let us say cos, ok like this. So, 0 t 2 t similarly here it is minus t. is minus 2t ok so basically integration of a function is the area under the curve ok integration of a function is the area under the curve and here what basically we want to I am I am trying to say is that whenever we integrate a sine or cosine function over one complete cycle whether it is minus t to t or 0 to 2t whatever the value of t we take that integration value will always be equal to 0 ok because see let us say for 0 to 2t we take this is the area of the curve which is above this horizontal axis and this is the area of the curve which is below the horizontal axis this is positive this is negative total both are of equal magnitude they are equal the area, magnitude of the area that is equal but as it is lying above the horizontal axis x axis or t axis whatever you call it it is positive and it is below the horizontal axis that is why it is negative equal magnitude opposite sign so they cancel each other out and 
the net value is 0. Similarly here if we take 0 to 2t this is the area of the curve which is above the horizontal axis and let me use a different color here and this is the area of the curve which is below if we you know add these two halves okay this one this one it will become this total magnitude but it will be above the x axis or t axis and this total will be equal to 0 it will cancel each other out the blue portion if we add them together it will be equal to this green portion in magnitude but opposite sign this is positive this is this is positive here this is also positive but this is negative equal magnitude and opposite sign they will cancel each other out and the net area will be equal to 0 so whenever you integrate from 0 to 2 this here here also the same thing from minus t to t if we take this complete cycle this is the area which is lying below okay I am using the same green color here okay green color so see this is the area which is lying below this horizontal axis the t axis and it is exactly equal with this positive half cycle this is a negative half cycle this is the positive half cycle the positive half cycle area is equal to the negative half cycle area but they are opposite in sign so if we add them together the net area will be equal to 0 from minus t to t same, same is the case for 0 to 2t here also minus t to t if we take consider this half cycle this is the area which is below this is the area which is above I am focusing on from here to here this point okay only focus here these two halves of the negative half cycle will, will get add together the magnitude will be equal to this complete positive half cycle but as they are negative half cycles part of the negative half cycles it will be considered negative same case equal magnitude opposite sign and the net magnitude the net value will be equal to 0 ok so here this whole integration of the cos function from minus t to t it will be equal to 0 so we have to only consider this part ok so here it will be limit t tends to phi a square by 2 t into 1 by 2 that will be equal to dt integration t from t to minus t that is equal to a square by 2 t into 1 by 2 into this will be t minus minus t which will be equal to 2 t it will get cancelled 2t 2t from numerator and denominator and that will be equal to a square by 2 this will be the power a square by 2 now here this is a finite value of power finite value of power ok so the signal may be a power signal but we have not calculated we have not been asked to calculate the energy of the signal so not do it so it may be a power signal see there is no guarantee so there is a possibility that it might have a finite value of power and also finite value of energy it is uh, no uh, for the condition of a power signal is that it should have finite value of power and infinite energy energy should be infinite but we have not calculated the energy here so we'll, we cannot say for sure whether it is a power signal or not so 
another thing which has been asked is to find the RMS value. Now we know that the RMS value of a signal is the square root of the power which we have calculated. We have already discussed in the discussion. So it will be equal to root over of a square by 2 equal to a by root 2. This is the RMS value of the signal. Okay. So here we have calculated the power and the RMS value of the signal. Okay.